And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. This is Mike, and this is Mike Dell's World number 185, I believe. Uh, let's see, today is the 6th of November 2011, and I am just finishing up a 3,600 mile trip in various cars. Uh, I'll explain more later. Uh, went to extreme South Texas. A little town called Donna, Texas. Uh, Dad and I uh, left Traverse City uh, a week ago Saturday at 7 in the morning. Drove down to Grand Haven in his car. Then uh, got in my mother-in-law's Cadillac after we loaded it to the gills with stuff. And uh, the three of us plus the dog got in the car and headed to Texas and uh, that was uh, I don't know 1500 mile trip 1700 mile trip whatever it was <laughs> but anyway uh, it was kind of fun first night we made it all the way into Arkansas uh, I, don't forget, forget, I forget the little town but it was just into Arkansas uh, along I-30 the second night we made it to Waco, Texas, and the third day we made it all the way down to Donna, Texas, which is right in between McAllen and Harlingen, near Brownsville. <clears throat> Excuse me, still getting over a little bit of a cold. So anyway, that was the first part of the trip, uh, and uh, we spent uh, a little bit over a day down there, Dad and I, uh, getting the mother-in-law's car that she keeps down there uh, going. Got that going, got a new battery, did an oil change, you know, just made sure everything was, was good. And also arranged for her golf cart to be serviced. And uh, she got some new batteries for that. Uh, I guess you guys probably re remember about a year and a half ago in June of 2010, I drove down or flew down there and drove my father-in-law and mother-in-law back. He was uh, dying of cancer. I drove them back in their motor home that they had down there. And uh, anyway, he passed away in November or not November in uh, February of 2011. And so they hadn't been down or she hadn't been down there in a year and a half. So everything needed to be checked out and worked on. And anyway, got that all done, and uh, Dad and I took off on Wednesday uh, for a friend's house in uh, near Waco, a town called Valley Mills. It's uh, very close to the Bush Ranch there in Crawford, Texas. And uh, had a nice dinner with uh, him and his wife, and uh, then we pressed on a little bit up into uh, just north of Dallas, and uh, that was kind of nice. Oops, I'm getting past here. <laughs> I'm driving a slowpoke car. Well, more about that later on. Anyway, we uh, took off from northern Texas and drove up to uh, Northwest Arkansas, where we uh, spent the afternoon and evening with uh, Tom Wiles, trucker Tom, and uh, had a nice dinner with him and, uh, and hung out and geeked out. And it was good to see Tom. I hadn't seen him in a, probably a couple of years anyway, although I talked to him quite a bit. I got to hang out with him. and well, We spent the night there in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Took off out of there, headed for Springfield, Missouri, which is uh, it's a few hours away, a couple hours away anyway, and uh, met up with a client of mine there in Springfield for lunch, and then kept on going and made it almost into Chicago. Uh, stayed in a town kind of south of Chicago, probably on the extreme outskirts of Chicago, uh, and I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but... It was, uh, it was all right. 
and then uh, yesterday uh, drove the rest of the way back to Grand Haven to put uh, mother-in-law's car back in her garage and then dad took off and went home with his car my wife in the meantime had come down to Grand Haven staying at the mother-in-law's place and uh, so I hung out with uh, her and some friends there uh, at the condo for uh, last night and then this morning I bought a car uh, well, I guess bought is not quite exactly the right term for it. Oh, uh, about three years ago, I think it was, three or four years ago, I'd bought a uh, 91 Toyota Corolla for my niece. And she uh, had just got her driver's license and uh, needed a little car to get around, and uh, another friend of us up, friend of ours up in Traverse City, had this car for sale the one I'm riding in now and anyway we gave it to my niece and she just got a new car actually she's got my old Camry now and her husband got a new truck that's how that worked <laughs> so anyway so she's driving my old Camry and I got this uh, old Corolla back which is fine I, uh, this will be a great beat around town car gets good gas mileage not exactly the best thing on the freeway but we didn't have to be on the freeway too much. On a two-lane road now, a US 31. Uh, we're just coming into the little town of Bear Lake, uh, north of Manistee, <laughs> along the Lake Michigan shoreline. But this is the last bit of my trip, and when I'm done, I'll have about, actually it's about 3,700 miles uh, in the last eight days. So, uh, and Dad got home yesterday. Uh, so, but anyway, it was quite an adventure. It was good to see uh, everybody we got to visit, and and good to get the mother-in-law settled in down in her uh, winter Texas house. And uh, I don't know, somebody will have to go down there and get her uh, in the spring. I don't know whether it'll be me or my brother-in-law, uh, but uh, should be. Uh, Another good adventure, I suppose. But yeah, I you know wrecked that other Toyota, and I haven't replaced it. It's Solera that I had for a short time. I didn't wreck it. Somebody else wrecked it for me because they were uh, texting while driving instead of paying attention to me sitting at the stoplight. And yeah, you guys heard that story. But anyway, the insurance paid off on the car and. I put that money in the bank, figuring uh, at some point I'll replace it. But, you know, I've got the old uh, rust bucket pickup. It's a 93 Ford, and uh, I fixed all the rust on it. You know, northern Michigan fix. I <laughs> filled it full of, uh, filled all the rust holes with uh, great stuff and Bondo, and then uh, painted over it with uh, a liquid bed liner material that you'd use on a bed of a truck which I've done a couple other times on old cars. It just kind of slows the rust down and uh, fills in the holes. That's all that matters. And I think I'm going to have to do that with this one. A couple, the, couple of the doors are rusty, and there's a couple other uh, minor issues with it. Uh, but all in all, it's in pretty good shape, and it's got uh, just over 100,000 miles, which is nothing for a 20-year-old car especially a Toyota, and it's been well taken care of its whole life, and it'll continue to be my beat-around-town car, and I won't, won't have to uh, replace the, uh, the other one anytime soon. If I ever need to go on a long-distance trip, I can either uh, borrow or rent a car. Uh, that's uh, what I plan on doing. That's what I did for the uh, uh, pod camp. Uh, Cincinnati trip I took the week before I went to Texas. I uh, borrowed my folks uh, pretty much brand new Corolla. It was nice having a, a vehicle that got uh, 40 miles to the gallon. So, and this one probably get almost that. Uh, but you can't drive this one at 70 miles an hour really. I mean, it will do it, but it seems like it's revving a lot. This one doesn't have a tachometer, so I can't tell what it's doing, but right now I'm doing about 55 indicated, 
and uh, it sounds like it's revving pretty good. I don't know if you guys can hear any of that in the background. One thing cool about this car is it's got a, a really good stereo in it. Uh, uh, Heather, my niece, put put a Kenwood uh, uh, head unit in here, and uh, it's got a USB plug and an iPod controller, and that is really slick. <laughs> so it was great. I was listening to podcasts, and you know, when you get out of the car, I didn't have to pause it. You just turn the key off, and it pauses your iPod for you. When you get back in, it starts it right back up and keeps the iPod charged and pretty neat. So, anyway, so that's the uh, car stories. I did mention I attended PodCamp Cincinnati uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was uh, organized by uh, Daniel Lewis from uh, the Ramen Noodle or noodle.mx and he also does uh, the Audacity to Podcast uh, that podcast and a couple other podcasts but anyway he was the organizer the main organizer there was a lot of people involved with that and uh, had a great time down there uh, got to meet up with a lot of people that I've met before and, and uh, meet some new people and it was quite a drive put on uh, about 800 miles that weekend <laughs> so I've been a driving fool but I don't have to drive any long distances to get home uh, for the foreseeable future I am planning on going to uh, the consumer electronics show in Las Vegas in the first part of January but only driving that'll involve is uh, driving from the airport to the hotel and, and, and back and forth to the uh, to the convention center. Maybe I'm going to rent a car because I'm staying downtown Las Vegas instead of out on the strip. I saved about a thousand dollars in hotel uh, charges there uh, to stay at the Plaza, which is newly renovated down there at the end of Fremont Street in downtown Vegas. So we'll get to see uh, that all renovated up the uh, hotel and uh, casino. Looking forward to that. I'm going to be working with the Tech Podcast Network, doing, uh, oh, whatever they need me to do, carry batteries around, uh, run cameras, uh, you know, just a general gopher, and get to uh, mingle around the uh, Consumer Electronics Show and see all the new uh, gadgets and gizmos that uh, they have. So that'll be a new experience. Never been to a, a big show like that in Las Vegas. Of course, Blog World just got over in L.A. I was planning on going to that, and uh, since I had to do this Texas trip, I uh, changed my plans just a little bit and decided to opt out of that. that uh, that's good. It avoided me having to fly from Texas to L.A. and then L.A. back to Michigan. Because the original plan was I was going to drive the mother-in-law down in a rent-a-car and then turn the rent-a-car in in Texas and fly the rest of the way. But it was a whole lot cheaper to drive her car down there. Uh, it's a nice car, too. Uh, it's a big old uh, Cadillac, uh, what do they call it, DeVille uh, D'Elegance. <laughs> it's the top-of-the-line one, and you know, it's a little bit older, but... It, when we left, it only had 71,000-something on it, and uh, we pulled into the garage yesterday. It had 75,009 miles on it, <laughs> so so it's pretty good shape for its age, and definitely a nice ride. Uh, not, nothing compared, you know, this, this, this riding in this Toyota is... Uh, not nearly as nice, but uh, I didn't have nearly as far to go. Uh, and it's funny, I had a Toyota just like that. I had, an, I had another 91 Corolla just like this uh, back uh, when I lived in Lake Ann that my sister gave to me. Uh, not that I needed to, the charity. I can afford a car. I just choose not to uh, buy expensive cars because, as we've talked about before, 
you know, the only car payments I pay are uh, maintenance and upkeep. And that works out good. And, uh, you know, I don't need to be in the newest, fanciest, uh, gadget-laden vehicles. Although, you know, it'd be nice. I'd love to have one of those uh, new Fords with a, with a sink in it and, and all that. But, you know, for what, the type of driving I do, you know, the old beaters are perfect. We do have the, the one nicer vehicle that we use to pull the camper and, and uh, my wife uses. That's got 140,000 miles on it, but it's still working good. And uh, don't see any reason to replace it anytime soon. So many people get wrapped up in these car payments. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, I've done that before. And I guess there's nothing wrong with it, but, you know, I look at it, I look at it a little differently now. Uh... You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't have loans on things that go down on, in value because, I mean, I don't think you can go the whole distance of a car payment. Or well, you, you probably can go the you know if you go all the way to the end of it. But if you know if you're like most people, you trade every two, three, four years, and most of that time you're upside down in the car. Uh, you know, the car's not worth what you owe on it. And then if you get in a wreck, your insurance company only pays what it's worth, not what you owe on it. And then you've uh, got a problem. You know, if you don't have the cash in the bank to, to make up the difference. And then you got to go out and uh, replace it. And then, uh, you know, if you don't have car payments, insurance, whatever the insurance pays, if you have full coverage insurance, you know, you can use that to buy the next car you know you may not be able to afford it as new a car as as what you wrecked is in my case you know with the insurance money if i was just going to use that i wouldn't have been able to replace that car but since i didn't owe anything on it that money just sits in the bank and uh, i can use it to uh, repair the cars i have or uh, at whenever i need to uh, buy another one and uh you know, and the money I'm saving by not having a monthly payment, you know, if I was disciplined, which I'm not any more disciplined than anybody else, but if I were disciplined, I could upgrade the car every year uh, to uh, something just a bit newer and a bit better, and, you know, before long I'd have a paid-for pretty nice car. But uh, I have no real ambitions to upgrade. I was listening, you know, totally... <laughs> A whiplash moment here uh, with the subject, but I was listening to uh, this week in Google. Oops, uh, getting a uh, phone call here. Hang on. Okay, I think that worked. Uh, she's gonna call me right back because she had turned around. <laughs> she's just as my wife. She was uh, driving home from uh, Grand Haven also, but uh, she's about uh, two hours behind me. Because she had a bunch of stops to make. But anyway, so the phone's going to ring again uh, with that uh, funny Geico uh, ringtone that I have <laughs> just for her. So anyway, I totally uh, lost where I was at, but I, I'm pretty sure I was talking about cars and car payments. <laughs> ah, crap. But yeah, like I say, I just I don't see the point in having car payments anymore uh, and the other thing I'm going to do this uh, this next spring is uh, since I've got two beater cars and a decent car I've got the, uh, the car thing pretty much handled and I got rid of the motorcycles a couple years ago I'm going to buy myself a, uh, a scooter and buy a new one either going to get a uh, Honda Ruckus which is their uh, little uh, battle scooter looking thing it's uh, you know doesn't have all the plastic on it just a, a frame an engine and a seat and handlebars and <laughs> you know they're pretty reliable get 100 miles to the gallon and whatever go 40 miles an hour and that'd just be perfect in the summer either that or I'm going to get a genuine rough house 50 which is a, a, a genuine scooter company. Oh, well, there she goes again. Hang on. 
Okay, got that uh, all taken care of. Just making sure I'm recording here. So anyway, yeah, the scooters. Uh, the reason I'm thinking of 50cc scooters in Michigan, you can uh, register them as mopeds for, uh, I don't know, it's probably 15 bucks for three years or some ridiculously low price, and you don't have to have insurance on them, although I probably would if I, you know, get a brand new one. You know, at least for theft, you know, if someone makes off with it, I'd, I'd like to like it to be uh, replaced or replaced mostly. And they get 100 miles to the gallon. They go 40, 45 miles an hour. And uh, also in Michigan, you don't have to wear a helmet on a scooter. You do on a motorcycle, at least for now. I think they're going to change that or they're trying to change that. I probably would wear a helmet most of the time, but... I kind of like the idea of having the option. And uh, so I think that would be fun, you know, be able to scoot around town and uh, and when the weather's decent, which it is a good portion of the time in the summer. Uh, I got that old moped uh, last summer, and I did use it a little bit, but it never quite ran right. It's a 77 Honda Express, and they're hard to get parts for, and... And, uh, you know, not as uh, user-friendly to work on as some of the newer ones. I believe the uh, Honda Ruckus is uh, fuel-injected, so uh, that's even more user-friendly. But I got to look at that because the uh, Ruckus goes for about 26, 2700 new. And the uh, Rough House is 1995 or something like that new. And I think I'd, uh, you know, the the only difference being the r- r- rough house is a, uh, a two-stroke, and the uh, Honda is a four-stroke. So, got to look at that too, because you know the four-strokes are generally more reliable than the two-strokes. But anyway, I'm telling you about the Gen- Genuine Scooter Company. They're uh, they've, they've been around. Uh, probably five or six years. Uh, it's a, uh, a company out of Chicago. Uh, relatively small company. It's the best scooter company you never heard of. But they uh, make, uh, well, first off, they bought the rights to make a few of the older model Vespas. And those are made in Italy by the same people that made them for Vespa. It's called the Stella. They make a, a two-stroke Stella, and now they just came out with a four-stroke Stella. Those are 150cc scooters, which have to be registered as a, a regular motorcycle. And uh, those are quite quite neat, kind of retro-looking. And then they've got a couple of models that they designed themselves that are uh, rather nice. they got the, uh, oh, what is it, uh, the Buddy scooters. You got either a 50cc or a 150 or a 125. I'm not sure which, but you know it's a full full size scooter, uh, and uh, those are those are quite nice. The, they're two stroke also. In fact, the engine on the Buddy is the exact same one in the Rough House. The only difference with the Rough House is it's made for uh, you know you can actually take it off road. It's got uh, you know big knobby tires and. A little more ground clearance and it's a little beefier than the buddy and that's the one I'd I would want because uh, I'd also like to take it along when we go camping and uh, you know like up on Sugar Island there uh, it'd be nice to be able to putz around on all the dirt roads and trails up there and uh, and same thing with the Honda uh, Ruckus it's a uh, it's definitely off-road able uh, off-roadable <laughs> anyway uh, so I don't know that's my current thinking uh, as far as transportation needs uh, don't don't believe uh, I'm gonna bother uh, replacing the, the other Toyota with a nicer car anytime soon so uh, anyway boy this is all about transportation isn't it uh, speaking of which I just passed through the thriving metropolis 
of Benzonia, Michigan. <laughs> so I've got about uh, 30 miles to go before I get home. And it's kind of nice to see uh, northern Michigan again after only being gone uh, eight days, nine days. And uh, oh, you'll, if, you, if you read the post before you listen to the podcast, I'm going to get on my soapbox here a little bit. I gotta say, I got some bad things to say about Texas, and I got some good things to say about Texas, or Texans in general. Nice people. But I do not think that there is any way on this earth (laughs) that I would voluntarily live in Texas. First off, the weather. Yeah, it's great from, uh, say, September through April. It's probably awesome to live in Texas. But the rest of the year, at least in South Texas, it's too dang hot. The other thing about Texas that both me and my dad concluded is anywhere that there's any population you know, of any size... It's way too crowded, way too busy. And, you know, you got to wait in line. I mean, even the fast food places, it's just crazy busy. I know I should talk. Traverse City is a tourist town, and it's always busy up here, but at least I know my way around. And I suppose if I lived down there, I would know my way around and not not probably be as bothered uh, about it. But it's just overpopulated. You know, I'm not getting into the trucker two times overpopulation rants that he gets into, but <laughs> I could see his point. Uh, but it's Texas. Uh, and the other part of Texas, when the, when you're not in a big population area, the scenery is, I guess to some people it might be nice to look at, but I don't like it. I just don't. Uh, it, it, it's It's rather plain and boring and brown <laughs> and there's I guess there's some green around too but there's a lot of brown I, and, and I've been to a few different parts of Texas I imagine along the Gulf Coast it uh, you know looks a lot like Florida which I really also don't really have a lot of use for uh, other than it's nice to visit once in a while but and same with Texas nice to visit but man I wouldn't want to live there <laughs> and they're confusing no uh, they're, they're streets uh waco we stayed in waco and uh, trying to find a a place to eat that wasn't a fast food place right next to the hotel it was impossible they got those frontage roads instead of just standard exits texas seems to you know anywhere near a city tends to build access roads which are just you know a whole other road on either side of the freeway and they're one way one direction one way the other direction and if you want to go to something on the other side of the freeway, you got to go all the way down to another exit and then go cross over or under the freeway. And it's just darn inconvenient. We were uh, working on uh, my mother-in-law's golf cart. The golf cart dealership was ex- just across the freeway from the uh, park that she lives in there. And... It was, you know, I think you had to go four miles. You know, two miles down, cross over the freeway, and go two miles back up to get to this place that you can see across the freeway. And uh, like I said, the Texans are the nicest people in the world, uh, the ones we met, anyway. I have no problem with the people. There's just too many of them in certain places, and their road system's a little screwy, and the scenery's not good. <laughs> but I'll di- I will tell you one thing: there, the aggressive driving that you get uh, in the northern parts of the country, or at least the northern parts of the country that I'm used to, uh, like around Chicago and Detroit, and anywhere in Ohio that I've been. Uh, you know, no matter how fast you're going, there's always somebody right on your back bumper wanting to go faster. And it's the same right around here. You know, here I am. I'm going the speed limit. If, well, I'm getting up to the speed limit again after coming through the little town of Honor. 
So I just now approaching 55 and setting the cruise, which is the speed limit on this road. If you've listened to me any, any uh, length of time, you know that uh, where I live, we're not anywhere near any freeways. So it's all uh, two-lane highways and, and back roads. But I'll bet you dollars to donuts before I get to my turnoff in Interlaken to, to go over to my folks' place, pick up my dog. There'll be somebody on my back bumper wanting to go faster than 55. And they're not nice about it. They'll they'll get out and, the, you know, they'll kind of stick, stick their nose out into the other lane a little bit and turn their lights on and act like I'm just being ridiculous by going the speed limit. And that doesn't happen in Texas. It didn't happen one time. And we drove the whole length, top to bottom of Texas, twice. Drove through Dallas twice. Austin. San Antonio. Uh, And never once did I have somebody annoyed with the fact that I was going the speed limit. And I thought that was just great. And even on the two-lane roads, they kept their distance. We, We were going the speed limit. And incidentally, their speed limits, even on the back roads, are 70. You know, unless you're near a town where I think it goes down to 65. But didn't have any problem with uh, irate drivers uh, in uh, in Texas, Arkansas, even most of Missouri. Uh, and then we started as we got into Illinois and Indiana and Michigan. Of course, we got the aggressive drivers again. And uh, I just uh, come through a passing lane. I had four cars fly by me, and I'm doing 56 miles an hour. Oh, my God, I'm breaking the speed limit. But anyway, so I wasn't overly impressed with Texas again this time. Uh, I did live in Texas for uh, six weeks one summer (laughs) down at San Antonio at the... uh, Lackland Air Force Base. I went there for uh, basic training, but uh, I was too busy to worry about being in Texas. But it was hotter than hell. But you get used to it, I guess. I sort of did. Of course, they always say, well, it's a dry heat. So is a blowtorch. But anyway, I digress. I'm not one to like hot, sticky weather or hot weather in general. Okay, well, that's right where it cut off. For some reason, my uh, portable recorder either uh, ran out of battery or some for some other reason just shut off right in the middle. I actually had about another 15 minutes there, but it, I don't uh, know what I said. But <laughs> anyway, no big deal. I just figured I'd uh, just clean off the recorder. I said, oh, geez, I forgot to put that out. Uh, it was about a week ago. Uh, today is... That's a little week and a little bit. Today is uh, November 15th, 2011. And uh, like I said, there's been a lot going on as usual. And one thing you'll notice is that uh, this will be listed in your iPod or your iTunes, if you get it that way, under Radio Mike Dell. I am rebranding. I'm not uh, changing the name of the individual podcast, but I am... uh, Kind of rebranding all of them under Radio Mike Dell, so uh, that's that's what that's all about. The website title is now Radio Mike Dell, which changed the feed title for Mike Dell's World, but this will still be Mike Dell's World podcast. And then, uh, of course, in the uh, Radio Mike Dell feed, if that's the one you're subscribed to, you'll also get Retro Tech, Aviation History this week. And Geek of the North, once I start those back up, uh, the audio versions. And I'm still in the middle of uh, resetting up my studio here. Or should I say, I, I still have plans to uh, finish it. <laughs> not really uh, not really done a lot here since, since I uh, kind of tore things apart. Other than uh, it's still all together. But uh, it needs to be moved and I need to set up my green screen and and I got to uh, do a few other things, such as uh, I want to get a, a a virtual set. I don't think I want to try to make one myself, although that's possible. I think I'm going to buy one uh, from one of the stock video slash photo sites. Uh, they have those out there. And 
Because I, I want it to, you know, I, I don't want it to be all about the uh, the green screen. That the thing is, I just want a decent background, so I can uh, sit here on the bar stool and and give you uh, give you some video that's a little more interesting than just seeing me uh, talk into a microphone. So that's the uh, that's the plan, and still is the plan. But like I said, on these uh, audio feeds, I'm not planning on on dumping video on you. That that always gets confusing. But I will tell you about it, and of course, everything will be available on uh, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever on the websites. Uh, looking forward to uh, getting that all done so that I can, you know, whenever I got a a thought to share, I can just uh, a short one. I can just share it on video. And of course, I'll I'll keep doing these uh, as as I uh, do. Kind of like the as I'm driving. Uh, I don't know what I got to. I, I haven't re-listened to that whole thing, so I, I may repeat myself a little bit. But uh, I'm sure I talked about this. I, I ended up getting my uh, little Corolla back from my niece, who uh, we gave it to her. I don't know about three years ago, and. Well, it's been nice having that little car around. I mean, it's definitely not, uh, you know, spit polished like every, uh, you know, like the other cars I've had. Uh, you know, it's, it's not as comfortable, but it's a great little around town car and uh, definitely costs less to drive around than my old beat up truck. So that's a good thing. Of course, I like talking about that. Yeah, I had a couple of special interviews uh, with Retro Tech. Of course, they're all special, but I, uh, Interviewed Daniel J. Lewis from uh, the, well, recently of uh, PodCamp Cincinnati, but uh, he does uh, a whole bunch of stuff over there at noodle.mx. It's the Noodle Mix Network. Does a clean po- comedy podcast called the Ramen, Ramen Noodle. He does the Audacity to Podcast, uh, a podcast about how to podcast and use Audacity. I'm using Audition, so eh, whatever. But I got Audacity and have used it a lot in the past. And he does a, a, a couple other ones there. Of course, he's the organizer of PodCamp Cincinnati. So that uh, definitely took up a lot of his time, and uh, he did a, a bang-up job of it. So anyway, if you want to go check that out, uh, either listen to it in, in the same feed if you're listening to the Radio Mike Dell feed, or uh, go over to RetroTechPodcast.com, and you need to go over there anyway uh, to uh, find out what all Daniel's up to. And then I had another interview with a longtime friend, co-host, and uh, ham radio cohort, uh, John Martin. Uh, KF8KK was his call, is his call, and uh, he... uh, interviewed with me with me on uh, retro tech podcast that interview will drop at uh, midnight friday got to uh, you know keep them spaced out a little bit so uh, look for that uh, saturday morning and that was a great interview about uh, old broadcast stuff john's a uh, broadcast engineer amongst a whole bunch of other things and he uh, started a, a new podcast here uh, recently called the u.s broadcast engineer kind of a geeky behind the scenes take on on broadcast engineering uh, more specifically TV but uh, a lot of it applies to uh, radio so it was really fun having him on it was the first in studio interview I've got a couple more in studio interviews lined up uh, the Farley brothers as I call them anyway uh, Jim Farley of course of Musical World podcast and uh, also what's up with that whenever we do it but i'm going to interview him for retro tech that ought to be fun he says he has a a a new segment i need to add to that podcast but uh, he won't tell me about it until we do the interview so (laughs) that'll be uh interesting to find out what his idea is and uh and and do it probably then i'm gonna have uh jim's brother keith an older brother who's also a good friend of mine and a ham radio cohort. I'm going to interview him, uh, and hopefully we'll uh, talk about some old uh, ham radio stuff, probably amongst a whole lot of other things. So uh, that should be a a good interview. Got a few others lined up. Uh, I'm not going to name drop yet, but uh, just stay tuned over at Retro Tech. You might uh, might hear some people that uh, you, you might have heard of before. 
not connected with uh, with me here. Anyway. Anyway, we'll call this a podcast. I got one little uh, short audio clip. It was from a uh, local radio station since we're talking about all kinds of uh, broadcast stuff there uh, with John uh, over at RetroTech. Uh, it's brought this up and uh, somebody uh, sent this to me and I'm going to go ahead and play it there at the end. It's a uh, the voiceover thing. So uh, anyway, catch me later. Alter Bridge, Real Rock 105 and 95.5. You're on the job with Cartman. Streaming online at realrockradio.fm. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realrockradiofm. All right, so I want to give you a little background into radio, a little insight, if you will. On the station, there's something we call imaging. And what imaging is, is that piece of audio that you hear between songs that has like the real rock 105 and 95.5. You know, that kind of a thing. It's imaging. It's supposed to help, you know, enhance your image and just kind of be a little icing on the cake, so to speak, to keep the ears stimulated. So that's kind of what uh, the imaging's for. And uh, we had a voice guy. He cuts them dry, and then he sends them to us. And dry means there's nothing on it. We produce them here in-house. So he just sends us his voice with nothing on it, and then we take it and turn it into something that we put on the air. Now, yesterday I received a new batch of them, and uh, I had specifically typed these out, so I know exactly what was supposed to be on them. And our voice guy, somehow, his brain drifted to La La Land or something, and I pulled some audio that I wanted to play for you from our voice guy. Now, the first piece that you're going to hear was supposed to say, If your ears had an ass, we'd be kicking it. That's what it's supposed to say. Now I want to play for you what it actually says from our voice guy. And this is so bad. If your ears had an ass, we'd be licking it. Really? If your ears had an ass... We'd be licking it. Seriously? We'd be licking it? Dude, what are you thinking? So then that that's fine. You know, maybe it was just a mistake. He looked at it, glanced at it, and then that just kind of, oh, uh, you know, didn't catch on. So then later on, there was another one that he was supposed to cut, and it was supposed to say, kicking more ass than a fat chick at a buffet. And this is what I get. Licking more ass than a fat chick at a buffet. Licking again? Really, dude? Anybody want to take a guess where our voice guy's mind might have been? 